let us discuss about tetracyclines tetracyclines these are broad spectrum antibiotics these are broad spectrum antibiotics they are mainly static carbon bacteriostatic they are mainly bacteriostatic and if you take classification classification they are divided into three groups into three groups group 1 group 2 and group 3 and group 3 in group 1 we have tetracycline tetracycline clo tetracycline and oxy tetracycline oxy tetracycline oxy tetracycline in the group 2 we have democlocycline democlocycline climocycline climocycline and group 3 we have doxycycline doxycycline and minocycline okay as we go down this groups from group 1 to group 2 group 2 to group 3 lipid solubility increases lipid solubility increases solubility it increases as we go down this groups and efficiency also increases efficiency and lipid solubility they both increase as we go down okay remember remember minocycline is the most potent is the most potent tetracycline if you take mechanism of action all tetracyclines they have similar action similar mechanism of action they their mechanism is inhibit protein synthesis inhibit they inhibit protein synthesis how they inhibit this protein synthesis is they bind to thetis rna thetis rna binding to this thetis rna this results in this binding it results in interference of it results in interference of binding of amino acylase amino acyl acyl trna to binding of thetis rna it inter interferes with the binding of amino acyl trna to a site this a site is present in mrna and mrna plus ribosome complex okay so whenever this tetracycline they inhibit that is rna it results in interference of binding of amino acyl trna to a site of mrna and ribosome complex this re this results in inhibiting of inhibition of inhibition of protein elongation protein elongation okay this is mechanism of action first before going to this how this tetracycline they enter into the cells of bacteria into the bacteria cell into the bacteria cell these tetracyclines are transported into the bacteria cell by active transport by active transport by active transport these tetracyclines are transported into the bacteria cell okay in gram negative bacteria in gram negative bacteria there is in gram negative bacteria there are porins there are porins suppose these are porins on the bacteria cell was through these porins this tetracycline they diffuse they diffuse into the cell through porins in gram there will be both the mechanism by active transport and porins in gram negative bacteria see i told you as we go down the group there is increase in lipid solubility more lipid soluble tetracyclines more lipid soluble tetracycline soluble tetracycline they diffuse passively passive diffusion passive diffusion into the into the bacteria cell wall more lipid tetracyclines more lipid soluble tetracycline they diffuse passively into the bacteria cell wall okay let let me discuss what i have said you in the how these tetracyclines are transported to the bacteria cell by one is by active transport second one is in the in the gram negative bacteria there are porins through which this tetracyclines diffuse passively and one more thing is that in uh, the more lipid soluble tetracyclines they diffuse passively into the cell the reason why these tetracyclines are not affecting humans is there are two reasons for this there are two reasons why these tetracyclines are not not affecting humans one is that porins that are responsible for the transport of tetracycline into the cells are absent okay these porins are absent into the these porins are absent in humans second one is the protein synthesis mechanism machinery in the humans are less susceptible to tetracyclines protein synthesizing protein synthesizing machinery machinery is less susceptible less susceptible susceptible these are the two reasons why tetracyclines these are two reasons why tetracyclines are not effect are not harmful to humans now coming to if you take this antimicrobial spectrum as said before these are broad spectrum so initially when these drugs were discovered they were 
they were acting against all microbes except to fungi and virus except to fungi and virus these were acting against all microorganisms but now the spectrum has come down the spectrum has, has come down because of development of resistance now the spectrum include coming to cocci in cocci the susceptible organisms are gram negative and gram positive cocci these include staphylococcus aureus staph aureus streptococcus pyogenes streptococcus pyogenes and some now some neisseria gonorrhea few neisseria gonorrhea and neisseria meningitis few neisseria meningitis and neisseria gonorrhea okay the susceptible gram positive bacilli are clostridium clostridia species and other anaerobes that means anaerobes are susceptible gram negative bacilli are hemophilus duprei ersinia pestis kalmenlanto bacterium granulomatis vibrio cholera ersinia pestis ersinia intracholitica h pylori brucella pasteurella multicida and next deponema pallidum borrelia these two are quite sensitive means the sensitivity is not much but they are quite, some strains are still susceptible and all rickettsia and chlamydia they are highly susceptible to this tetracyclines we can use tetracyclines in this rickettsia and chlamydia infections and micro mycoplasma and actinomycetes they are moderately sensitive this mycoplasma and actinomycetes are moderately sensitive coming to protozoa like entomia australica these are inhibited these are killed these are killed at higher concentration then that means they are inhibited at higher concentration it's not cidal it is static okay inhibited at higher concentration coming to resistance how this tetracyclines how the how microorganism develop resistance against this tetracyclines see first thing is that there is cross sensitivity re, cross resistance among tetracyclines okay that means if microorganism develops resistance against one tetracycline there is, there are chances for this microorganism to double, do, develop resistance to other tetracyclines also okay there is cross resistance among tetracyclines and there is cross resistance cross resistance between tetracyclines and tetracyclines and chlorophenicol also okay chlorophenicol also between these two also there is cross cross resistance means if you, if a microorganism develops resistance against this tetracyclines there is also chance for this tetra, uh, microorganism to develop resistance to this tetra, uh, chloram pericol also okay and the mechanism is one is there are mainly three mechanisms are there through which it can develop resistance one is that efflux mechanism efflux mechanism that means the drug which is accumulated in the bacteria cell will be sent out through by efflux mechanism second one is there is decrease in the concentration of concentrating efficiency concentrating efficiency in the bacteria cell work, bacteria cell that means and see for this drug to enter into bacteria cell there needs to be some mechanisms like porins diffusion mechanism this mechanism they become less efficient and third one is there is synthesis of plasmid mediated protein okay Plas- this is plasmid mediated protein and this protein it protects the rna binding site rna binding site from tetracycline okay this protein it it, it protects rna binding site which this protects rna binding site thereby preventing the interaction of tetracycline with this rna binding site these are three main important mechanisms if you take pharmacokinetics this this for tetracyclines tetra, this tetracyclines they chelate they chelate calcium magnesium aluminum ferrous sodium bicarbonate they chelate calcium magnesium aluminum ferrous sodium bicarbonate so this should not this hence this tetracycline they chelate this metals we should not give tetracyclines with milk which contain calcium and we should not give iron preparations we should not give this with sucralfed sucralfed okay with this we should not give this tetracycline because they chel- the chelating metal is present in them and one more thing is that all the tetracyclines they undergo enterohepatic circulation enterohepatic circulation okay and coming to absorption coming to absorption orally food interferes with food interferes with absorption but but with more lipid soluble drugs like minocycline doxycycline like minocycline and doxycycline there is no interference of food with absorption hence we can give this minocycline and doxycycline with food this is about absorption then after absorption this tetracycline they have got large volume of diff- distribution large volume of distribution they got and they have variable degree of protein binding variable degree of protein binding they accumulate in spleen liver 
and connective tissue of connective tissue of bone and teeth because as i said before this um, tetracycline they chelate calcium they chelate calcium calcium is present in bone and teeth hence they this tetracycline they accumulate in the bones and teeth bones and teeth and minos coming to minocycline minocycline which is more lipid soluble lipid soluble this accumulates in fat this accumulates in accumulates in fat in the csf the concentration on in the csf is 1/4 of plasma concentration this takes place even if the meninges are inflamed even this meninges are inflamed the concentration will be 1/4 of plasma okay 1/4 of coming to excretion coming to excretion they are mainly excreted through glomerular filtration glomerular filtration except doxycycline except doxycycline hence this doxycycline can be given in renal patients in renal patients all all tetracyclines they under they are excreted mainly through glomerular filtration but doxycycline is not like that hence this doxycycline can be given in renal patients tetracyclines this tetracyclines they cross placenta they cross placenta and they are secreted in milk next administration how this tetracyclines are, are administered this orally as said before food interferes with food interferes with absorption hence half an hour before so this should be meal or two hours after meal after meal this is oral and coming to i am these are very painful these are very painful and i be they cause thrombophlebitis 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 and and topical preparation and topically they cause sensitivity but we can give ocular ocularly ocular local infection but in this ocular application ocular local application we can give application we can give but other topicals are not are contraindicated okay coming to adverse effects one is irritating effects irritative effects if take this irritative effect they cause eye irritation they cause eye irritation because of this irritation on oral injection on oral they cause nausea vomiting diarrhea and epigastric pain epigastric pain if the drug leaks in esophagus if the drugs leaks in in esophagus if there is leakage of the drug in the esophagus it leads to odynophagia odyno odynophagia odynophagia and esophageal ulceration and esophageal ulceration and this is more important with doxycycline okay this is more important with doxycycline coming to organ toxicity organ toxicity they are dose dependent okay dose dependent organ toxicity is seen coming to liver toxicity liver toxicity they cause fatty infiltration fatty infiltration second one is they cause jaundice these two these two are very less with less with tetracycline and oxycycline less with tetracycline and oxycycline oxycycline in the pregnancy in the pregnant women it precipitates acute liver necrosis precipitate precipitate acute hepatic necrosis hepatic necrosis coming to kidney kidney toxicity kidney toxicity this takes place when there is pre existing pre, when there is pre existing renal disease this lip, kidney toxicity is takes place when there is pre existing renal disease this this takes place because this kidney toxicity is due because this tetracyclines this tetracyclines they accumulate in the accumulate in kidney accumulate and damage the kidney they cause by accumulating okay but this toxicity is not seen with not seen with doxycycline is not seen toxicity is not seen with doxycycline this toxicity kidney toxicity there is one more condition called fakoni syndrome fakoni syndrome called fakoni syndrome fakoni syndrome let us see what is this syndrome in this what happens is the degraded the degraded when outdated tetracyclines are used when outdated tetracyclines are used the degraded products of the, these tetracyclines the degraded products of this tetracycline they are damaged plasmal tubules they are damaged plasmal tubules this is called fakoni fakoni syndrome and it is reversible it is reversible coming to phototoxicity phototoxicity coming to phototoxicity and this phototoxicity is more common with doxycycline 
and democrocycling. Okay, this is more similar democrocycling and democrocycling. And there is distortion of there is distortion of nails takes place sometimes. Distortion of nails sometimes takes place. Okay. Coming to bones and coming to bones and teeth. Bones and teeth. As said before, acceleration of calcium takes place. This calcium, this calcium plus tetracycline complex, tetracycline complex. This complex will deposit in bones and teeth. Okay. When when this is given in mid mid pregnancy, when this is when tetracycline is given in mid pregnancy to three months three months baby, three months baby. If they if the, it is given in pregnancy and three months baby, it leads to it affects affect deciduous teeth. Okay, deciduous teeth. When given in a late pregnancy, when given late pregnancy and childhood, it results in temporary suppression of bone growth. Temporary, temporary suppression of bone takes place. Temporary suppression of growth of bone takes place. Growth takes place. When given from three years to three, when given from three months to six years of age, it affects crown of anterior crown, crown of crown of anterior teeth. It affects crown of anterior teeth. Remember, here it's not three months; it is five months. Okay, it is five months from pregnancy to five months baby. It affects deciduous teeth. Okay, this is about coming to diabetes. Diabetes insipidus. Insipidus. See this tetracyclines. They antagonize ADS hormones. Antagonize ADS hormones. Antidiabetic hormone. This by antagonizing this antidiabetic hormone, it precipitates diabetic insipidus. Coming to to vestibular toxicity, vestibular toxicity, vestibular toxicity. Minocycline causes vestibular toxicity. Minocycline, it causes vestibular toxicity, and this will be manifested as vertigo. Vertigo. This will be manifested as vertigo, ataxia, and and nystagmus. Okay. This will be manifested as this. Okay. Next, coming to hypersensitivity. Coming to hypersensitivity. Hypersensitivity it is rare. Okay, coming to super infections. Super infections. This takes place at eye dose. And the most important complications of this mm, super infection is super infection is intestinal super infection by intestinal super infection by candida albicans. Super infection by candida albicans. Okay, and one more complication is pseudo membranous pseudo membranous enterocolitis. Pseudo membranous. Pseudo membranous enterocolitica, enterocolitica, okay, enterocolitis, enterocolitis. This two are the most important complications of super infections. One is intestinal super super infection by Candida albicans. One one more thing is pseudo membranous enterocolitica, and this super infection is less common with doxycycline and minocycline. This super infections are less common with doxycycline and minocycline because this don't usually don't reach reach, reach intestine. Or lower bowel, lower bowel. Hence, it's very common, uncommon with this doxycycline and minocycline. Coming to use of tetracyclines, there is a mnemonic for remembering these uses. RBC in plasma. This is mnemonic. RBC in plasma. R it indicates rickettsia, relapsing fever. R B for brucellosis, C for cholera and chlamydia. And in it indicates inguinal or granuloma. And P it indicates plaque, peptic ulcer, pleurodesmosis. L it indicates lymphogranuloma venereum, Lyme, leprosy. Y it indicates atypical pneumonia. S for inappropriate syndrome of antidiabetic. In our SIADH, M for malaria and A for amoebiasis. Okay, these are the diseases in which we use tetracyclines. There is a mnemonic as said before. This is a mnemonic. Remember this. And other the other uses are mening meningococcal strain carrier state. We can use meningocycline for this meningococcal carrier state. And peptic culture by H. pylori. The important drug is tetracycline. Specific drugs. You see, in meningococcal carrier state, we use meningocycline for mal malarial prophylaxis. We use doxycycline for amoebiasis. We use doxycycline and syndrome of inappropriate ADH secretion. We use doxycycline. Okay, a secondary drug for coronary syphilis and chlamydia. It can be used as secondary drug. And for pleurodesmosis in malignant pleurodefusion. These are the important uses. And there is also mnemonic. Please read this mnemonic. For uh, for this is for taxidermy. I won't read. And you just read it. This will be useful for you people. Thank you for watching.